I'm Miss Weaver. My role was kind of twofold. I was very much the director, but I was also their teacher. <laughs> My expectation is that at some point I will annoy one of you or all of you. And now just say it again without your tongue stuck out. I expect that we will laugh. I expect that sometimes we're going to get quite frustrated because we're not in a real space. The big challenge of that then becoming an online process was how will we create some cohesion between 17 people who are all in different rooms around the world and around the UK. And I guess my main feeling about all these different rectangles um, for me create all these different separate spaces and I wanted to see how we could bring them together. I expect to be surprised by what we can come up with. I expect myself to be uh, appreciative of all the opportunities to move. I expect myself to try not to disconnect for too long at a time and not to get frustrated with technology. The starting point was very much the student experience. What is important is that we get the best out of you, but also there's no pretending that this isn't challenging. I was toying with the ideas of looking at identity and belonging, and then I thought that the, the potential for that to get heavy and hard and difficult was too much, and that actually we really needed to create a joyful process and to try and have as much fun as possible. So we opted for just celebrating cultural heritage from, from different people's grandparents. Right at the start of the devising process, we were asked to gather some information about our grandparents, whether that's sayings or anecdotes about them. The history then informed sort of the dance styles that we chose to incorporate and learn. It also influenced the music and the lyrics. A simple task at the start then started to infiltrate into the whole creation process. going to be playing with bringing in small cultural references. We're unlikely to stop everything and sing a whole Welsh folk song, but we're very likely to pull something that we like into the soundtrack in some way. My name is Isaac Lee Cronick and I'm a songwriter, performer and composer. I'm old and twisted disgruntled but like me and I. I studied music at Goldsmiths University. We're just trying to establish a I guess a language or a, com a way of communicating how we want the music to reflect what we're uh, devising. Before we start actually trying to create something it would be good to just sort of establish that language. <laughs> super exciting for everyone in the cast to have um, a musician on board and also to be so active within the rehearsals. Although that a lot of those starting points ended up not being in the show, they were, they were hugely important for what it ended up being. It was never something that was added on at the end or something that we, well, we have a song now and you have to create to that song. It was never that, it was very much Isaac was there and on hand to change things and um, work around us as performers, which was really exciting and also upped the ante, I guess. We collected a lot of phrases that were uh, prevalent in each of the students' families and we used those to kind of create lyrics that were sort of a, an abstract image of joy and and those lyrics, maybe they don't sound like they make much sense if you just read them, but I think as the overall picture, they evoke some of those things. According 
course there was a massive influence from a rich history of music from all the grandparents. In a way, it was just kind of trying to be influenced by that music in a, in a respectful way and um, making sure that it, it wasn't, uh, we weren't poking fun at those things. We were, ha we were having fun with it rather than poking fun. The roller disco, I wouldn't say like is a specific type of dance, but it, um, it's definitely a creative space. The circus body was a phrase that went around quite a lot. Kind of the idea of working in different planes. So using the shoot plaque like here, the slapping and the clapping, not just stood up and jumping around, but also like upside down and on your side and from different perspectives on the camera. It wasn't like circus circus because most of us couldn't uh, be on their discipline, but the, some of the like movements or the movement quality of the circus, we were able to create. Five, six, seven, eight, right, left, right. Left, left, right, left, right, back, two, three. We didn't always have right. the people whose background it was doing those styles. We utilised whoever was available. Uh, we found videos of the styles and changed right. them and took little bits out and put them in an order which would be useful for the piece to communicate what we needed to. I think I've kept you up to date with the roles that we've established. So Seb came to me and said he'd love to have a go at the choreography. Toffee's up for helping out with the tech. Neve is collating all the grandparents' stuff. Brett and Ruby stepped forwards to say, actually, I, I'm really up for drawing. We've got costume people which is basically Maisie and M saying, can we have control of the budget and go down to the vintage shops? Um, and I've said, yes, actually. Oh, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> Peter Board's so, like, hard to recreate, obviously. Seb, could you make her do a double, please? <laughs> When she went to go for a double, it went in with a completely different energy. What I'm saying is you bothered. Uh, we went down different um, avenues and uh, found different creative ways of developing movement that were on different planes, which still like had a nod to the original idea of the different styles of movement. My discipline is aerial rope and there is quite a few aerialists in the performance. Um, and I think it was quite a daunting task to try and get the essence of Ariel um, into the piece. But I think through our explorations, we found different ways of sort of creating that feel. So, for example, focusing on specific movement qualities, whether that's beats or drops or swinging or the sense of weightlessness. So I'm trying to like rep replicate kind of like the swings that you do on rope. And we also played with isolating that movement quality within a single body part. So whether it's just an arm or a leg, um, using that to influence the idea of it being aerial whilst being on the ground. So I can go from hanging to a toe hang. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Circus is about pushing boundaries and usually you push the boundaries by doing things that are a little bit dangerous that are physically challenging but this time it was just like pushing uh, the boundaries of not being able to do something that you want to do and still be able to create something that is interesting. It's this different way of using your body that circus brings. Did, however have the restriction of the space being a lot smaller than what we're used to so we had to simplify a lot of things we had to think of different variations of moves we at one point explored lots of different moves that could be used with just the space of a mattress just gently 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 Seb can you get that hand off the floor can you can you can you no we're definitely definitely going to build from beats we're going to build from beats into the payoff what did what were you beating for Oh, look at this. Beautiful. <laughs> I like that. I can feel that all the furniture is going to have to get re removed from that I'm room at, at some point.
we thought that using the biggest room would probably be beneficial, but that is somebody's bedroom. So we had to move everything out. We had to dismantle the bed. We had to change around where the sofa was. A real positive from that meant that they then felt that they were in a performing mode, that they they felt like they were in a studio or that they were uh, on stage in some way because the space had been made kind of precious. So we were trying to find a neutrality, which was where the idea of the drawing came from, that we would be able to draw a clean, empty space uh, and then and then put them into it. That's a nice space you're in, Ruby. What is it? Literally just one of our door frames. Really nice. I totally believed you were inside a trap door. In your space, Jen, I didn't even know what was going on anymore. Something that emerged from the students working in their own spaces was starting to look at architecturally setting up the space for that moment. We don't want anybody to just show us something. We want everybody to perform something. Edu! What? I don't even have space in here for an orange. Oh, this is brilliant. This is this is really lovely end to the week. What's the main thing to take away from this week? Like mistakes or like things not working is absolutely fine. Like that's how we <laughs> learn. Having bad internet is very frustrating for this project. <laughs> if two people speak at once, we go back to the beginning. Okay. Ten. Five, twelve, twelve, one, one, oh. fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 16. Oh. One of the main tools, which I think worked really well, and it's surprising it didn't make it more into the show, was for them to have projectors. And I think the people who had projectors working a lot were able to project other students into the room and they had some lovely moments of play with each other as though they were in the same room. And I think that's really helped keep people present. So the task is to work in pairs, to look at something that the other person's doing and to think about physically where you might put yourself into that action. What's your three dimensional channel that you can safely move through in time and space, which is what makes the choreography of it really interesting. Having a little bit of more interaction between each other that really like opened up the, the way of working together online just in terms of getting the sense of connection and being connected to other people's movement qualities um, and taking their lead and them taking your lead and it was very much a physical communication um, tool using the projectors so it did help with timing and looking at what people are doing and informing decisions about your movements but more than that for me it was the connection between the performers like it was a really nice exercise and like Brett was saying, it's so nice to see like that mirroring image of doing that unison. We could get the feeling of being in the same space together. So you could actually see the, the other performers um, next to you or in front of you. And um, it made it easier to um, react or to feel what the other person was feeling or yeah, just have like a sense of uh, being together. My name is Rowan Virgo uh, and my role in the project was both as an editor and also to help uh, aid in the ways in which we used the technology in the creation of the show. Could people go and change their virtual backgrounds? We found that using Zoom virtual backgrounds was a good way for the students to put themselves into each other's spaces. One person could record themselves in their space and send that video to somebody else who could set it as their virtual background. Yeah, but it says um, computer doesn't meet requirements to use a virtual background without a green screen. Unfortunately, not everyone's computers were able to use virtual background. 
Oh, that's really nice, Jen, having Tara in the background. Let's just pin Jen a second. That's just so... I keep falling for it. To solve both of these issues, we tried using a program called XSplit, which I was running on my end, capturing the students in their spaces, uh, removing their background, and then overlaying them in real time. But because XSplit is designed for somebody sitting in front of their camera, it often got confused with circus movement and would lose the person and they'd disappear from the image. Who makes things with their hands? Uh, Brett, can you tell me a little bit about that? The idea of working with drawings in the show was around from the very start. And do you still draw? Uh, yeah, I still draw. Fantastic. Having Brett and Ruby be the illustrators and the animators was so special. I think everyone found it really personal, seeing their work integrated with our performing. We're recording this to send it to Ed so he can cut out just the animation, and then we're going to add that onto someone's virtual screen and react to it. This is making me very happy. This is what I've been wanting. It's nice seeing people's rooms starting to appear. Given the limitations of the software-based background removal, it was decided that using green screens was going to be the best way to cut people out and put them on the drawings. We had to get the green screen up and record from as far away as possible to get our whole bodies in and then make sure that no one was like throwing an arm out of shot. There are a couple of ways in which we used the green screens. One was that the students would record themselves on their phones performing in front of the green screen and the other way was the live section. As soon as we got the okay that like today's the day we're going to be doing it live we all kind of had a little okay how's this going to work we ended up coming back to using zoom for virtual backgrounds this worked a lot better now that everyone had a green screen everybody set their virtual background as a plain green background which meant i only had to remove one shade of green it's similar to being in a in a live show like on stage it kind of gave us this strange let's do it like let's go forward let's just go and get it right first time the other thing i enjoyed about the the moment of doing the show was that when we finished there was a really strong sense that we'd just done a show with this process it's eliminated that fear of offering yourself up to different roles so I think that'll be something that we all take forward in terms of pushing yourself and trying to take part in as many different aspects of a performance as possible. I assumed there would be a lot more difficulties than there were. I definitely definitely will come back to communicating this way with people especially in the future and going to be working with people that may not be in the same city as me at the same time. Well, I've been working the production line. the end of time or at least until my thumbs go green or until you give that crow machine after my shift I put my leather on right next to the river until dawn past the docks and the midnight ships Faster than an Eskimo complete.